It's always great to compare things. It gives us a clearer understanding of concepts that would normally blur the lines between what is what and what is not. My name is Arya and I'm from Edureka and I welcome you to today's session where we will be comparing the two most promising blockchain platforms, Ethereum and Hyperledger. I'm going to compare Ethereum and Hyperledger on the basis of following parameters. These parameters include network type, cryptocurrency, consensus mechanism, smart contract, language of development, and maintenance. Now, before we jump to comparing them, let me brief you a little bit on both the platforms. So to begin with, Ethereum is a decentralized platform that enables business logic to be implemented on the blockchain with the aid of smart contracts. These contracts are executed on a decentralized computer called the Ethereum Virtual Machine, which lies at the heart of the Ethereum architecture. The developers at Ethereum have always advertised themselves as the future of the internet, and a lot of people seem to agree too. With its simple and generalized protocols and easy to learn scripting language, Ethereum has become a platform thriving with use cases of decentralized applications. For example, CryptoKitties, Loterium, the Roulette, and many more. Moving on to Hyperledger, many people seem to be really confused as to what Hyperledger is. Well, Hyperledger is an open source project under the Linux Foundation. The Hyperledger project has various frameworks under its license, like Fabric, iRoa, and ND, to name a few. All these frameworks enable developers to provide blockchain-based solutions for industrial and business-related problems. I have another video on this playlist where I think I've done a pretty decent job at explaining what Hyperledger is. You guys should definitely check that out. Now that I've briefed you all about our two contesting teams today, let's begin comparing them. Starting off with network types. Well, there are three different types of blockchain networks, public, private, and consortium. Public blockchains are accessible by everybody with access to the internet. These networks need every ledger to run consensus to validate every transaction that occurs on the network. Private blockchains are much more different. They're only accessible by a limited number of participants, as the name clearly suggests. They may or may not even have a cryptocurrency involved with the network, as the network is made to tender to very specific needs. A consortium blockchain, also known as a permission blockchain, is pretty similar to a private blockchain. Aside from its limited accessibility, it also has levels of permission levied on the network by leveraging trust. In our case, Ethereum is a public blockchain network. If you have a computer and an internet connection, you can very well participate in the Ethereum network. This also means that if you were to execute some secret transaction that you're really ashamed of, it'll be visible by everybody else on the network, and thus your secret doesn't really remain a secret anymore. Hyperledger, on the other hand, is a consortium blockchain. It was developed in such a way that you could execute those really embarrassing transactions in complete privacy and confidentiality. Talking about cryptocurrencies, Ethereum has its network-specific coin called Ether. Ether is mainly used to pay for transactions and to buy gas, which is in turn used to pay for the computations committed on the EVM. New Ethers are mined by miners who in turn validate the committed transactions. Hyperledger has no such specific coin. Hyperledger gives the developers the freedom to implement blockchain technology however they want for their business. With this said, if a business deems it necessary that they need a token or a coin for their purposes, they can always implement one. Talking about consensus mechanism, Ethereum uses a proof of work mechanism for its consensus. In a proof of work based algorithm, a hash function is used to create conditions under which a single participant is permitted to announce their conclusion about the submitted information. And then those conclusions can be verified by all other people in the system. False conclusions are prevented by parameters of the hash function, which ensure that false information will fail to compute in an acceptable manner. In the Ethereum system, the participants who publicly verified the transaction on behalf of the entire network are rewarded for their participation with newly created Ether. On the other hand, Hyperledger allows developers to choose whether they require a consensus mechanism at all. When they do choose to opt for a consensus mechanism, an algorithm called practical Byzantine fault tolerance is used, which is also used in other popular blockchain platforms like Ripple and Stellar. Very roughly, without explaining the whole algorithm, what PPFT does is as follows. Each node on the network maintains an internal state regarding ongoing specific information or status of the network. When the node receives a message, they use the message in conjunction with the internal state to run a computation. This computation, in return, 
helps the node to arrive at a decision regarding the validity of the message. After reaching its individual decision about the message, it shares it with all other nodes in the network. A consensus decision is determined based on the total decisions submitted by all the nodes. The key difference between proof of work and PBFT is that in proof of work, only one node, rather the first node to solve the problem, shouts out the answer. Unlike PBFT, which requires all the participating nodes in the consensus to return a decision. Moving on to smart contracts, Ethereum and Hyperledger both allow business logic to be implemented with the aid of smart contracts. Ethereum smart contracts are generally written in Ethereum specific scripting languages like Solidity or Serpent. Hyperledger contracts, on the other hand, are written in chain code. Aside from that, to run smart contracts on Ethereum, computation fee must be paid in the form of gas. On the topic of language that each platform is written in, Ethereum uses a combination of Golang and Python, while Hyperledger uses a combination of Golang and Java. Ethereum as a platform is maintained by the Ethereum developer community, while Hyperledger comes under the Linux Foundation. So much like other Linux projects, people from all over the world can help Hyperledger get developed as a project. Now that we know the differences of both the platforms, let's go through a use case of both of them. For Ethereum, I'm going to show you all how voting can be made completely transparent. The voter will submit his information to an identity verifier running on Ethereum with the help of smart contracts. After the identity has been verified, a token key is generated with the voter will enter into the ballot interface. This token is unique and solves the problem of double voting in today's world. The voter casts his vote and this vote is registered in a block on the blockchain network thus maintaining transparency and integrity of the voting system. Ethereum is preferred here as a platform over Hyperledger due to its public nature, which is integral for voting. For our Hyperledger use case, I'll be explaining a drug tracing scenario so that a pharmacist knows where his medicines are being manufactured for quality assurance purposes. It is important to note that there is no need for it to be public, as that would mean revealing confidential obligations between the pharmacist and the manufacturers. Every change in the medicine's location, storage type, etc. are stored on the blockchain. These can also be automated with the help of Internet of Things sensors. In this way, the pharmacist and the patient both can verify the origin of the product and quality is assured. A very similar business model is being used under the name Hyperledger Sawtooth to track fishes after harvest till the time they're served on the table at a restaurant. Coming to the point of which platform is the best, I personally don't think there is any best per se as implementations of each platform should be according to the specified business models. In my opinion, in the near future, most business-to-business -business franchise or B2B franchise will be run on Hyperledger as they need to execute confidential obligations without passing everything through a central authority. On the other hand, Ethereum will rule the world of business-to-customer or B2C enterprise due to its global reach and public nature. That's it from me today, guys. I hope you all learned something today about these two platforms. Goodbye.